Hey guys, Jacob here. Just a little disclaimer at the top of the episode uh, that this conversation does mention certain sexual themes, uh, certain explicit content, nothing too grotesque or detailed, but they are mentioned as concepts. And in case you're listening to this podcast in the car with your kids or something, you might want to skip to the next one for now and come back later in private just in (laughs) case. Uh, Thank you for listening and on with the show. I told him about how sex is how you find out you're in love with someone and he was like, it has nothing to do with love. And I was like, how would you know? And he goes, I love my family. And I was like, yeah, oh, I'm not telling you to go have sex with your family. <laughs> <laughs> but, so then I left him. He followed me to the bloody train and he followed behind me a few steps. Fred Durst, you guys. Thanks, Fred. <laughs> You've given so much to music. I know y'all be loving this right here. Oops, we had to bleep that. I, like, you're, you know, I want this to be as work-free as possible. So. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be the one. It's one in the morning. We'll do like a squawk. There's, there's, I know no, y'all be loving this there's right a, there's here. A, there's, a couple, there's a couple bleeps in this episode. There's, mm. there's quite a few. Yeah. Well, L-I-M-P. <laughs> biscuit is right here. I'm proud to only know like one Limp Biscuit song. <laughs> I'm proud to know a lot of the lyrics. <laughs> uh, chocolate starfish and the hot dog flavored water. I straight up don't know what you're talking about. That's the name of their album. I, and I'm proud to say that I have no idea what you're talking about. Rollin' My Way? No, I know the Classics. song My Way. I don't know the name of the album. Well, now you know chocolate starfish oh. and the hot dog flavored water. That uh, little that little portion of my brain could be used for so many other facts, like one like one kung fu move, or like mm-hmm. a birthday. I can never remember a birthday. Maybe like a little bit of information like regarding physics. Yeah. And now I know the name Pandask, of ask the. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now I know the name of a Limp Biscuit album. Now you know. That's good. And now you guys know, welcome to I'm Trying, guys, the show where we're always learning because learning is the way, you know, you learn by making mistakes. Um, in the words of Miss Frizzle, let's make mistakes and get messy. I'm Janelle Dennis. I'm Jacob Derwin. I have no idea what's going on. We're so glad you're here. Welcome to <laughs> episode, uh, I want to say nine. I think this is episode nine. I thought it was ten. I've been telling people that it was ten No, tonight. I think it was, well, I think it's nine. I think it's nine. I think we have over ten episodes recorded. Editor Jacob here. This is the tenth episode. Back to the show. But I believe this is the ninth episode mm, that's to premature. be released. That's premature, which makes sense because I was mm. a premature baby. Mm, but how long? Two months. That's like I wasn't supposed to be born. We talked about this. Oh yeah, <laughs> no, I know. I, well, you mentioned you were a miracle baby. I didn't know it was two months. I, okay, I never said I was a miracle. You said Everyone the word, else around me said. You said the words "miracle baby." No, I said my mom and all the doctors, okay. all four right. different doctors, said I was a miracle baby. I don't self-identify two months as a, a lo- miracle. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're a miracle, you know. Two months. That's a, that's Two a, months. That's a yeah, lot. I was supposed to be born September twelfth or wow. September eleventh. I was born July seventeenth. That's like, that's like nature. Were yeah. you like, were you like in one of those like glass kind of? Fish oh yeah, actually, bowl, fish tank things. Yeah. Well, my mom got um really very 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 sick. Mm. She got preeclampsia, a mm. um, a birth. Condition, you know, a lot of people died during childbirth. It was like one of the number one things people died in childbirth back in the day, mm. um, essentially kidney failure. Wow. And um, so that happened. And my mom also told me something recently where she said, um, because I guess this may be too much information so we can cut it out if we need to. I don't think we're going to. I don't really care. But um, my mom and my father, uh, they were best friends for a while they were obviously weren't planning me surprise <laughs> for four different doctors in jamaica told my mom she would never be able to get pregnant because um wow. she, with her something going on with her uterus mm-hmm. and ovaries she never had her period ever 
Ever? Well, she had it like maybe a couple times a year, like wow. three times, not every month, like three times a year or something. Oh. She had a seasonal period. That's the miracle right there. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Like the eggs just weren't coming out. Dang. So, um, she, um, four different doctors told her she wouldn't be able to get pregnant. And so her and my dad, who were, you know, friends and then more than friends <laughs> at a point, we're doing their thing, and um, she found out she was pregnant, but like kind of further along down the line, mm. and she'd been taking this medication, and afterwards, um, she found out that the medication you shouldn't be taking while pregnant, because the number one side effect was that if you're pregnant, your baby will be born without limbs. The number one side effect was that if you're taking this medication while well, pregnant, your specific. baby will not have limbs. Yeah, that's what she told me. Not like narcolepsy or like... No, not like dizziness. Dizziness or nausea. Nausea. <laughs> now we're skipping right to if limbless you, babies. If you're pregnant, no fingers, no toes. Oh my God. <laughs> no no uh, forearms or, or calves. I, oh my Lord. <laughs> Just come out looking like Rayman? Like what's going on? Yeah. So, um... My mom oh. found out. My mom was already horrified. She mm -hmm. said, "Well, I've been taking this medication every mm -hmm. single day." Mm -hmm. And <laughs> here's what she told me recently, too, just in the past week, that when they did the ultrasound, so when she finally found out she was pregnant with me, they did the ultrasound. Apparently, I would hide everything in the womb, very secretive. So you really keeping on brand <laughs> as I am right now. What I would hide, so they couldn't tell what gender I was. You were like, were you just like covering up your crotch? I was covering up my, yeah, where you could see if it was a boy or girl, covering up that. Yes. And my, you couldn't tell if I had fingers because I was hiding my hands. <laughs> <laughs> this is so on brand for so me. so strange. Okay. It's so me though. Is like, it? Surprise. Like, I, just. You never struck like, me as secretive. I don't know. Are I you secretive? Know. I feel like maybe it was like a whole joke, like for me. Mm. I knew my mom was subconscious about that so i'm like let's give her the surprise of a lifetime <laughs> <laughs> so oh my, my mom gosh. and the doctors they didn't know if i was gonna have any like the finger they couldn't tell mm -hmm. fingers or like a little baby mm -hmm. genital malfunction know. yeah um so they didn't know that and then my mom got very sick and she was in the university hospital of the west indies which is a um it's a hospital in kingston jamaica mm -hmm. but also a student it's a, you know, they had their medical students there. Mm -hmm. So my mom was such a special case that they had all these students just surrounding her bed all the, all wow. the time. And they pretty much briefed these students that this woman may die and the baby may die. That's what they prepped everyone in our family Whoa. for. They said that someone for sure was going to die. Wow. Probably is going to be the baby, but maybe also the mom. Oh my God. And so like my mom was got used to like, don't expect this baby, but just like be happy for your life so my mom was just like so in and out of it um drugged up on stuff and just preparing to die they had a priest read her her last rites oh my god so um my mom's birth story of me was that they said okay she's got she wanted to complete uh kidney failure and my mom was like very very fair skin very like complexioned mm -hmm. she, her body was poisoned at this point so she was soup her skin had turned dark wow because her whole body like her, her it wasn't kidney processing wasn't anything yeah. yeah so she was poisoned and her blood pressure was through the roof everything everything was through the roof and so they said she's going to die we need to take the baby out because the baby is what is mm -hmm. it's it's, it's like that. our macbooks our 2012 macbooks <laughs> you know at the new macbooks have eight eight um gigs mm -hmm. of ram we have four mm -hmm. and so that was like having a baby <laughs> sure go with, let's go with it <laughs> that was a reach in terms of a metaphor <laughs> anybody that works at the apple store you know what i'm talking about help a girl out <laughs> so we had this extra ram which was me as a baby mm -hmm. and um so they read her last rites. They had our family come. My grandpa came. He was living at Canada at the time. I think my grandpa flew in. Oh, no, he he didn't get the chance to flew, fly in yet, but he was worried, sick from Canada. All of like her siblings, my uncles in there, my dad came, which they were kind of relationship-wise. Um, it's complicated at the time. Okay. <laughs> he actually came, and um, 
so my mom's recollection of the birth was that they took pretty much prepped her that you know this could go either way mm-hmm. but don't expect there to be a baby mm-hmm. we just want to be realistic yeah. So I was like, okay, like, and my mom said at that point she kind of given up and she was ready to die, which is very bleak. Oh yeah. But also like, I was also ready not to not have a baby, but she really wanted a baby. Mm-hmm. And um, so they said, okay, we're gonna have to induce labor to take this baby out two months early because yeah. we have to get out of you, or else. So this was both of you are gonna. So die. this was induced by the doctors. Yeah. Okay. Got so it. they induced the mm-hmm. labor, and. Um, then she said she she was just like in and out. I don't know what she was on, but she mm-hmm. was in and out. And then she woke up at one point and felt like she needed to use the bathroom. Like she needed to take a, I, a poo. I don't, I don't like where this is going. <laughs> she, she needed to take a poo. Okay. So she it calls them. She calls them mm-hmm. and they go and put a bedpan because she'd been, you know, do, she, that's what she'd been doing. Yeah. They bring a bedpan. She's like, no, 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 it, it feels heavier. <laughs> She's like, I don't know if it's the bedpan. She's like, nurse, nurse. And they come. And so it was a student doctor that first yeah. came with the bedpan. A oh, male student. Okay. Male student doctor. Sure. That came and, or male student nurse mm-hmm. comes with the bedpan. And then she's like, no, 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 I don't know. There's something. It feels weird. There's something else. And he didn't look under her gown because, um, I don't know, maybe he wasn't allowed to. Mm-hmm. So they get another nurse. And then the nurse comes, lifts up the gown and yeah. goes, oh my God, the baby is like, the yeah. head is coming out. Oh my God. So they're like, the baby's coming. So they rush in, they get everyone. And they're like, okay, you're going to need to push. And mom's like, I oh, can't. Wow. I can't. She was so weak from yeah. everything. She's like, I can't. They're like, you have to like just pretend it's a bowel movement and you really need to strain. And she's trying and she couldn't. So then they push, they physically push her head down to, into her chest. And she blacks out. And she does remember the birth. Wow. So she just remembers her head being pushed down into her chest, blacks out. She comes to, and she's groggy, and they say, okay, can you count like, how many fingers am I holding mm-hmm. up? She says, oh, three. Like, okay, can you count how many people are in the room? There's four. Mm-hmm. She goes, one, two, three. Four? Uh, because the fourth person was holding me, but my mom's recollection at the time, and this is the new element to the story that I didn't know. Okay. For 29 years, I never heard this. She's claimed okay. she told me. I'm pretty sure she never told me this part. Okay. I, my recollection was that she blacked out, and then five days later, my dad came and was like, oh, she's alive and she has so much hair and black eyes. Come see her in the incubator. She's okay. three pounds and she's struggling oh to breathe. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> but <sighs> my mom added this element of the story that, um, that she remembered that the fourth person that was holding me, she didn't think, she didn't see a baby. She saw a chicken leg. <laughs> like, a raw chicken leg. She thought you were a chicken leg. A raw chicken Leg. Leg. Like leg and thigh. She's like, I saw the, the fourth nurse holding chicken. I'm like, what are you talking about? Me? Uh, Janelle. Like, <laughs> it was me. And also the scary thing was that because I was so premature, well, I was three pounds. Yeah. I was so premature. Apparently in the last trimester, babies are covered with hair mm-hmm. and they shed the hair in the womb mm-hmm. and I guess swallow the hair and that's their first bowel movement. I didn't get the chance to do that. So you were just all I was hair. too early. I was too ready. Like I wasn't ready. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I came out not ready, not rehearsed. You came out fuzzy. Came out fuzzy. Like looking like an actual month. Like covered in hair that's hysterical like a monkey and my mom said it was she was scared when she saw me but she gave birth to the missing yeah. link by accident <laughs> but before that when my dad came he's like oh we have a daughter mm-hmm. and she's like oh wow and my mom's first question does she have fi- fingers and toes <laughs> mom's like oh. and my dad's like 10 fingers 10 toes and then she saw me and then I'm like, <gasps> like struggling to breathe in an incubator <laughs> But I'm okay now, guys. And even you know, even if I weren't born without limbs, I would still be okay. But um, definitely 
was a wild ride. Yeah. And also, like, I don't know whether to be offended that my mom thought I was chicken. Like... To be fair, she'd been through a bit. She'd been through a lot. <laughs> like, she thought we were both going to die. So I think waking yeah. up and being like, one, two, three, chicken? Mm-hmm. I, hey, man. Was probably the best outcome. I've... Uh, <laughs> Because even if it wasn't a baby, that would be a nice... Hey, a chicken. Like, yeah. one, two, three, the nurse bought me chicken. That's such a nice cool. consolation prize. Yeah. Also, KFC in Jamaica is the best. I'm not KFC, though. I'm, J- <laughs> I'm JD. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> yeah. um, that was... That's, that's insane. Um, you are a miracle. And... Uh, I'm not going to claim it yet, but... I, I think, Thank you. I think it's fair to say. Uh, on today's episode, we have the wonderful comedian Katie Boyle, who is uh, Katie. she she's delightful, and she was great to have on the show. She currently co-hosts a podcast with uh, uh, Des, Des Bishop, Bishop, a popular Irish comic. They're both popular Irish comics. Both popular Irish comics. And uh, the shift is uh, it's nothing like I'm trying from mm-hmm. what from what I know. It yeah, is an Irish podcast about sex, sex and, dating, and dating, but from an Irish perspective, which. For anyone who isn't, for, I have quite a few Irish or friends from Ireland, mm-hmm. and um, it's a very different culture in terms of dating and that stuff over there. Very um, more conservative. Mm-hmm. So, um, Katie is not, not. that. <laughs> uh, it, it's it's pretty funny. Um, like you just pull up the, the list of the episode names for the shift, and it's like. I I can't mm. say half of them on this show for the for the sake of getting the explicit tag. So yeah. it's it's pretty fantastic to be able to do a show that is so uh, forward and 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 blunt uh, and treat treat something maybe that could be could see could, could be seen as like a little taboo as something normal. Yeah, and, and, that, and no, that that's really what it needs. That's 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 important. Very and, liberating for people. Yes. Uh, Especially that come, not just people from Ireland, but people that come from a conservative background where mm-hmm. things like that are more taboo. Mm-hmm. And, you know, family may not be accepting of certain lifestyles and yeah. things. It's I think it's very refreshing. It is. Also, Katie does run a couple shows in New York that are, are very popular and um, where she does get to speak about that kind of stuff and have comics on. One of them is The Transplants um, at QED in Astoria. It's a show... Uh, primarily of comics from other comedians from other countries, mm, um, awesome. and then she also does host different comedy nights. I think at the Rochard in in Manhattan, an Irish pub. So she's doing her thing. Awesome, and uh, all of her information's in the show notes if you want to check out her stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, anyways, hope you enjoy our episode with the wonderful Katie, Katie Boyle. Boyle. came over here, I came over here to be an artist. Oh yeah? And that kind of turned out to be a bit of a disaster because, well, because I always wanted to be an artist. Like and a visual artist? Yeah, that's what I did in college. And I got like a really good degree. I got like a really good GPA and um, I got all A's in my um, visual art, which again, anyway. Um, <laughs> saying you got an A in art, one person can love it, another person can think it's shite. So <laughs> it's kind of hard to grade. But they do grade on a lot of the work ethic, and that's always what I wanted to do my whole life. And then I came over here and worked at a like super big museum. Can I say the name? I guess I can say yeah, the name. It's not a big deal. Yeah. Um, Whoa! Yeah, but I'm going to give out about them now in a second. <laughs> um, oh, yeah, we can always block it. <laughs> I don't think it matters, really. Like, they're not, it's not, gonna not like they're, gonna list, they're not yeah. like listening to comedy podcasts, I don't think. But, Probably not. And I'm never planning to work there ever again. And it's not like I was technically working there because they don't pay their interns. But, um, oh. uh, yeah, so I did a like internship there. But it was some weeks. It was like 40 to 50 hour weeks. And it was unpaid. And like, it was very... Wow. The whole thing was very scary. And Devil Wears Prada. And... Um, you know, they would just forget to tell me to go on a break and it was all, and then I was kind of new to this country, so I didn't know what to expect. Yeah, and yeah. It was horrible. That's, so you were fresh here. Like how long, I, like, did you literally get like, get like off the plane internship? Weeks. Oh yeah. my gosh. Wow. Where were you living? Um, at the time I was living where, where I have distant cousins up in Connecticut and then I moved in, uh, with Irish people that was like kind of. My family knew distantly, uh, but it was a nightmare. It was like an Irish couple who were like beating each other up. 
<laughs> it was oh, like no. very insane. Um, yeah, yeah, they were just a bit nuts in fairness. Um, well, I don't know, it just sounded very violent in their room. So that was kind of intense. And then Jeez. they ordered a bed off. Cr- oh, and he was also fighting with the other Irish girl we lived with a lot over oh like, God. you know, who drank whose milk and stuff. And he was, d- and he had like very. <laughs> horrible opinions that was very uncomfortable as well like he was very vocal about like you know he was he would say stuff that was like quite homophobic oh, and yeah he was just a, not a nice guy but then he ordered a bed off Craigslist and we got bed bugs within <gasps> the first like week and we I had spent all my money all of my money on this apartment because it's the broker's free the deposit which is insane there's nothing it's not like that in Ireland and then your first month's rent yeah. so I had zero money I was working for like 40 to 50 hours a week it was crazy for free free. and they wanted me to work on weekends so I was found it really hard to get a server bartending job I got one that would 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 like accommodate that lifestyle but the money was really really bad there so I was only making like 200 to 300 a week working five days there and (sighs) now there were like short shifts but I was also working at every other hour so like steal from um, like I would because they would get me to go out and buy the artists their food but they would never eat the food so it's not technically stealing because it was going to go in the bin that's in not the stealing end. at all but I would like eat eight bagels a day so then I ended up getting fat even though I was like hungry uh, I actually ended up putting on a lot of weight when I moved over oh and then we had the whole bed bugs thing and I had to sleep on the kitchen table that night when I saw those because they're actually like little monsters we've nothing yeah. like that in Ireland yeah. um, and welcome to New York they, yeah how big are they they're like like they're you can see insects them. you can what? see them you can see them it was hot yeah. and I remember saying I like we me and the other girl had gotten our beds and my cousin actually bought my bed but still because I didn't have any money but still we bought beds and we said don't like get it off craigslist and this guy was like it's fine so that night i saw them i went out to my kitchen table called my stepmom cried and then i slept on the kitchen table <laughs> oh my god and then, then a week later so we had to like they like i had to try a bunch of my stuff and they um bed bug bombed the apartment or whatever it was like a whole ordeal and then a week later I come home and everybody's like freaked out in the kitchen and they're standing on chairs and I'm like oh what's going on they said oh we've mice that's my bed yeah that's my bed (laughs) but they were like oh we've mice and to be honest I don't care about mice I but bed bugs are way worse but their bedroom door was open and I was like of course we have mice we're on the eighth floor Mm -hmm. mice I had to crawl up here to get up here because they had pizza boxes. There was at least five of them <gasps> on the floor and, like, trash and food. And, oh, my God, I was like, yeah, of course we have mice. Oh, sorry, we're not meant to curse. Um, <laughs> I can believe it. You're good. Thanks. Um, of course we <laughs> bloody mice. <laughs> yeah. Much better. Much yeah. Better. yeah. Oh, but it was a nightmare. And then the, oh the internship, the woman was really mean. And she was like, because it was like she, I have a visual art degree, which means I made art I never yeah. said that I've any sort of I'm you weren't a historian by any means yeah like I, yeah. I created a few um, exhibitions back home but definitely my degree did state that and I would I video edited a lot so I kind of wanted to do that part of it and that was great I got to do a lot of video editing and videography and they were very happy with that but I remember like the one of the first days I was working there she asked me to apply for a beer license and then she just walked off and a few hours <laughs> later she came back and gave out to me because I was still googling how to apply for a beer license and she was like oh I would have been quicker doing it myself and it's like yeah yeah you would have been. been yeah <laughs> like please I have no idea what I'm doing and then she asked me to go pick up her cat once and her cat this is a few months into it and her I went to pick up her cat but he was getting a haircut and had her credit card and it was a $200 haircut for her cat. For the cat. For the bloody cat. Oh. And I was so mad because I was like, they weren't even paying for my Metro card. I like, well, I would get like the odd lunch off them. And I was like, and I was putting in so many hours. And I was like, oh, I would be better off if I were a bloody cat. This is super insane. <laughs> Why did I get an art degree? Oh, I so. Um, oh. But then I ended up so walking. hated on some whiskers. <laughs> Yeah, right? <laughs> it taught me a lot, though. It taught me, like, how to kind of, uh, you know, I guess that I don't want to be in the art world. Um, yeah. And I still love art and stuff, yeah. but I don't want to be in that sort of... But anyway, I ended up just starting comedy, and I love comedy. So it all worked out for the best. So what, what brought you into comedy from visual art? I went to the Creek in the Cave. It's such a great venue. Like, I wouldn't... 
And they and in fairness to my boss, I always try to find them like not be like, oh, that she was like totally terrible. Mm-hmm. Her boss had gone on pregnancy leave, and I think she was under a lot of stress. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. So not that that was right, and I'm sure in her it eyes, down to you, yeah, and I'm sure in her eyes she was probably like, oh, this idiot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But but also if you were getting paid, it would be a different story yes. as well. Yeah, and you wouldn't actually hire me. Yeah. Uh, to do that specific stuff like beer licenses, uh, all that, or you would you would just train, just train someone. You can't expect them to know. You could... This was a couple years ago, right? Yeah, four because years now ago. in New York City oh. state law, there's the in- unpaid internship test where employers have to prove that your unpaid intern isn't doing actual work. That it's it's more of a vocational mm-hmm. learning. Capacity. And I'm sorry, we were doing work. We were setting up stages, and um, and that's why some of the days would be like 13 hour shifts because we were pulling stages apart, pulling wow. pulling them together, and uh, running around after artists and like you know serving them, getting them all their food and looking after them, and like sending out emails. I got in so much trouble because I sent out an email that wasn't like BCC, but I didn't know BCC was a thing. Again, uh, you've got someone who I can build a room. <laughs> I, I can do it all now, but um, so I did learn a lot for then producing comedy shows. But yeah. Um, oh, yeah, I guess that is an interesting skill transfer. Yeah, completely yeah. because you know we were holding events now. They were art events, but all of that stuff, like just how to set up a room, sending out promotional mm-hmm. emails, mm-hmm. posters. So even though, and I learned the hard way because when you when you do it wrong, you're not gonna do it wrong again. Yeah. So <laughs> you know, just bad for them, but good for me. <laughs> yeah. In the long run. Yeah, yeah, it was a good experience. Where did you go to school? Uh, Dunleary, IAGT, it's called. Uh, all right. I know one art school in Ireland, that's all I know. Yeah, people do that a lot about Ireland. Where Where are you from? Uh, they only know Dublin. Yeah. Um, you, know, <laughs> you don't sound Irish, your accent, and it's like, there's like a million accents. Yeah. Even Irish people say that some, to me sometimes, but anyway. Whatever. Yeah. But yeah, it's just like, yeah, there's, yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. So you walked to Creek in the Cave, and... Yeah, they got were, up. I didn't get up on a mic. There was a show, a monthly show, and an audience member can get up and tell a joke, and I did. And then the, oh. yeah, and the guy who was running it was like, everybody else who's like audience members is actually open mic comedians. The, mm-hmm. the audience members never get up. And he was like, oh, have you considered doing this? And then I was like, okay. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, but I, I love it. I mean, yeah, clearly you're still doing it. Yeah, yeah. There you go. And you produce a lot of shows now, right? Yeah. Like a couple of weeks. Yeah, well, uh, one of them just got cancelled. Um, oh, no. Yeah, the one you did. Oh, but in, sorry. <laughs> yeah, it's because they were like, remember when Janelle? <laughs> well, I knew it was coming. But we've had that one for a year. Uh, well, I've had it for a year. But it it was just not good for comedy. You did it. It's very, there's not a set up. We're standing on chairs. Yeah, I didn't it's know just, that you could stand on the chairs. I'm like, how is everyone so tall? Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah I didn't so see a stage. It, I, and it was a lot of stress for me running it. Um. Uh, so that's actually going to be changed into a monthly and it'll be upstairs so we don't really know the and I told them I don't want to just produce it so I brought in a co-producer but yeah so it, that's fine so that's good and just a comedy show it's not like cancelled it's rebranded yeah yeah to yeah. make it a bit whereas I still have the other weekly the other weekly is great that's at the Rochard they're both bingo comedy shows so there's like bingo and comedy and then I run the transcend show which I started running like a month into comedy so it's like it'll be like well, not no, a couple of months in, so it's like three and a half years old that show. Yeah. Um, and that's at QED. So, oh well, like so, I wanted you know I'd come here to I was like proving something to myself. I'd also like broken up with my boyfriend, moved out of our like well asked him to move out of our house, and then put the money down for a visa. So I was like I can't let I can't go back. I can't like I need and that's just like. Silly, but anyway, once it started comedy, it all got way better. But yeah, I moved out. I subletted my room, which is awful. I got some poor little nice person, and uh, because I was signed into a lease, I got some poor little nice person. Told them it was a lovely place to live. Got them to sign sign on, and I was like, "Your problem," <laughs> which is. <laughs> but I was like, I have to get out of here. Um, and then they never like they had my contact, so it's not like I was still like sublease. They like they they never. I think they moved out two months later and then got someone else. But yeah, just a chain of subletters. I know. I'm gonna go to. I'm gonna go to hell for that. But I had to get out. I was like, I can't. <laughs> and an, a, a place opened up that was cheaper. It, my friend needed a sublet, so I went to that, and that actually was a lovely. It was just really, really far away, but it was a lovely place. So I lived there for a bit, and then I moved in 
um, with someone else in Bushwick then for two for I've been with them for a few years. That's where we're at. There you are. All right, rocking. Okay, man, I just <laughs> I can't imagine a more like unwelcome welcome to a city than like living with a bunch of violent people and yeah. then rodents and pests all at the same time. That's just really yeah. Like, well, and because the girl, the other girl who lived with us, um, yeah, she was. She was just going through some stuff, so she wasn't happy. So she was like, you know when someone's like super sensitive, like who drank my milk or who will, uh, you know, so she was fighting with them and us and the whole thing. Um, Yeah. And then I lived, I lived in a place in Bushwick where there was like six or five, well, five of us living there and one of them had a girlfriend in like what should have been only a three bed apartment. That was crazy. And there was a dog. And there was a dog? Yeah. Yeah. But that's just like, you're poor here. It takes on, I'm only now... Um, I feel like I have like a bit of savings and I'm financially stable, but like this country, <laughs> oh my God, dude, like uh, yeah. The pets are living well. There's a theme. The pets are living well. <laughs> <laughs> this bloody dog would bark all of the time, and he had and he was such a nice dog. He's a lovely dog, and he's actually dead now. So God oh. rest his soul. R.I.P. But um, <laughs> don't be the bad talk the dead, but yeah, yeah, but like he would, he would, and it's it's awful. But, and I would never wish for the dog to pass away, but I've slept so well the past few months just because I'm such a light sleeper and that's my issue. Um, but he would also, well, actually, to be honest with you, Annie, even a heavy sleeper, he, he would bark at, at everything. And it was like Whoa. a high-pitched bark. So, like, yeah. he'd hear a noise at 4 a.m. and he'd be, like, going nuts. And he was, he was such a lovely, loving animal. But, like, it's hard to have animals in apartments in apartment yeah. New York yeah yeah, yeah. I'm always so. baffled when I'm like walking around Bushwick or any, anywhere in Brooklyn honestly and I see like some great mastiff or like a husky just like these big dogs but where yeah. do you live yeah because even our neighbor's dog now we're in we're in a new apartment and and that's the other thing the neighbor's dog will kind of set him off the poor thing and now the neighbor's dog just barks as well by itself and it's just like oh, I don't know yeah it's ha- it's just yeah, it's hard. It's hard to have. Like, go find a farm somewhere. Uh, yeah. Honestly, get a yard. But they're so, they're so, having animals is so lovely in regards yeah. to they're so, they're such great company. Like, I feel so bad for, for, for our uh, place just because the dog was lovely company. Like, you know, the poor thing. God. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I've been trying to convince my roommates to get a cat, but one of them is allergic, so I can't. That's what, what? I was trying as well. My yeah. roommate's the same, allergic, and because especially after the dog, I was like, we should get a cat, and they were like, no, because if cats are, co- but then but actually, sometimes no. you're not always allergic. Because I was allergic, and then we got a cat, and yeah. it never set me off. Well, I mean, it's it's cold. We'll talk about that later. Yeah. But yeah, no. But I sometimes mean, they meow in the middle of the night as well. So that could be you could get one of those psycho cats who like scratches at your door. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to sleep. Man, I, I went to the cat cafe several times. I go there often in Brooklyn Heights, and there's you pay seven bucks, you can hang out with all the adoptable cats for half an hour, and it's beautiful. And like half of them, like yeah, some of them are a little bit nuts, but like a lot of them are just like sleeping and mellow, and they want to like just chill and get pet. And I'm like, I'll take that. Yeah. I want that cat. You know, I love cats. My ex-boyfriend pushed me once, and, and okay. we were having an argument. Yeah, but it wasn't like, he was never, like, violent. Mm-hmm. Well, I guess it depends on what your definition of violence is. But, <laughs> um, yeah, we were having, like, a fight, and he pushed me, and my cat, like, scared at him, like, you know. <laughs> oh, wow. And then he shouted at the cat, and then a few minutes later, the cat did a big, like, poop. Sorry, I have to say poop because it's clean. Um, that just isn't naturally what I would say, so it sounded really forced. That's <laughs> why so I'm not having kids. Um, poop on his side of the bed. So <laughs> now I ended up having to clean it up, but still, I was like, Wilson, <laughs> Wilson, you got my back. So that's that's a good feeling. Yeah, cats are great. I love cats. Yeah, on, on my side, and they can sense the energy because when yeah. I when I go to visit my mom. And my mom's having a fight with me. We're yelling. So we're both yelling, but I'm the one that's kind of defending myself. And my mom's the one who's riled up. Yeah. My cat can always tell who's who's the one that's more riled up. And he'll go and meow. And Aww. be like, and it's almost like a, are you serious? Like, I, meow. I, meow. I, oh my God, I love that. And she goes, so she'd be like, shut up, go away, go away. And he just won't leave. And then he'll bite her. Oh and he my doesn't God. do that at all. But wow. it's only when she's yelling. Yeah, he's trying to like be like, Yes. And then I have to be like, 
hiding my smug smile. Yeah. Like, hmm, I wonder who's in the wrong here. French said to have a great equalizer. <laughs> but they, because I hate when people say that cats aren't loyal. They are loyal. It's they just are. they pick one person. I yeah. think I, I think they pick yeah. your they or, or or maybe if everybody's looking after them, but they know who's. They like they have their person. They know. Yeah, I definitely think they're very loyal. Yeah, yeah. I believe it. Yeah, because people are like, oh, but a cat will go to anybody. No, they won't. My cat. You could put out a tin and tuna, and my cat will be like, I'm not talking to you. You know, <laughs> if I don't, if I don't like it, they'll just be like, I'll go over and kill a bird. <laughs> so it's even more loyal that they choose you. Whereas mm-hmm. a dog will go up and talk to everybody. They're too friendly for my like. <laughs> You. I'm very friendly, so that's a very hypocritical thing to say. <laughs> so you're competing with the dog. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. I'm the friendliest person in the room, excuse you. <laughs> no. Excuse me, Fido. <laughs> I never thought of it like that. But I guess you're kind of right. Yeah. Yeah, I remember my cat ran away uh, briefly. We were, we were, there was construction going on in the house. And, like, a bunch of walls were, like, torn down. Like, windows were open. And he's an indoor cat. He doesn't go out much at all. And he left. Uh, he wandered out. And we were looking for him, we couldn't find him. And my parents that night were just like, I think he's had, you know, Taz is gone. Sorry. It's a nightmare. And we, I was like, I was so sad. And I went to bed that night just like so hard. I didn't even cry about it. Like, I, it was this internal. Oh, that's how you know it's bad. It was this like don't internal, cry. like deep sadness. And then I wake up the next morning and my dad wakes me up and he goes, at like midnight, we heard scratching at the door. And he came back in. And he, like, had never left the house. So the fact that he managed to get back home and, like, was trying to get back into the house is, like, incredible. Mm-hmm. And he He's lived... like an ex-boyfriend. He's like, I'm sorry, I made a mistake. Yeah. <laughs> Take me back. The grass is not greener on the other yeah. side. <laughs> but that's as well, I feel like that's quite an American thing. Yeah. To keep cats indoors and not presume. The cats are, like, they're intelligent animals. Well, our, yeah. cat, our cats in Ireland, they, you know... They're, they live very independent lives. Yeah. <laughs> they walk off and they come back when they want because they'll come back to where the food source is or That's where the true. cozy house is. They always yeah. come back. So I'm surprised that the well, cat was he, never... He wasn't collared or anything. Like, there was no identification on him. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, and, and I think it, you, like that, I mean, he, it had been probably like nine years or ten years at this point of having this cat. He like, always inside very the rarely left. Yeah. No, he... <laughs> He was a lazy boy. He was not a fan of... I can't say that too. He would like wander into the garage sometimes and like walk up a few circles and be like, yeah, whatever, man. And just like walk back in. It's yeah. like, I don't... That's what I want. I want a cat like who's like that to put in an apartment here. Like one that's like old and chill and like on the way out. And he's like, I just want to relax for a couple hey, of years. If you can take care of an elderly cat, you are a saint. Like that is a... Oh. That is a that is, look, any elderly pet. Because like, like a lot of... There's a lot of old dogs and old cats that are up for adoption that nobody adopts. Why? What's wrong with them? Because they're old. And because, because people, people want... They want a long-term pet. Oh, and... no. I want a part-time pet. That's why I <laughs> do go. not... I'm not a big fan. I like... Being able to like leave New York if I want, or mm-hmm. you know, uh, yeah, I'm very yeah. like uh, don't like being tied down. Hence mm-hmm. the no kids. Hence the no. Has, uh, this, has this been like a serious thing of yours for a long time? I think it'll it'll really depend on when I hit thirty. Maybe I'll change because I think I would be a really good mother. But until I f- kind of find out where my career is going, yeah. I'm, you know, where it takes me, I definitely don't want to be like, oh, I can't go to Australia because... And it really depends on... It depends on a lot. It's just hard for women, isn't it? Like that, and especially now. Because no matter what, we'll, we'll be anchored. Like, mm-hmm. I, no matter your, what, how liberal your partner is, I... Yeah, I, I just think it's important now, like, to be able to be like... To know that, to know that if I had a child, that's a huge... Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because you'd want to be a good mom, right? Yeah, Cause yeah. Because you could have a kid and just be like, see a, yeah. a... I don't know what a common name... What a name you'd think of for your kid would be. It's, Siobhan. That's so stereotypically Irish. Probably going to call my kid Isabel if I have one. Oh, but yeah. thanks for <laughs> <laughs> boxing me in there. <laughs> um, no, I just guess it's something I thought about, like... It's just such a huge responsibility, and uh, when you're not, when you're in the midst of comedy and you don't know where you're gonna go, it's like, yeah, it's just it's not something I'm planning for the next couple of years anyway. Mm-hmm. And that's so hard, isn't it? That we have like a timeline, like like maybe like thirty four. I'll yeah. be like, oh yeah, I was thinking of um, actually this is kind of the opposite, but I was looking into selling. You're not allowed to call it selling, it but is selling. selling your eggs. Yeah. 
Because you can get up to $20,000. I know, it's amazing. It's I, I looked process. into it that time when I was yeah. at MoMA. I looked into it and I called my dad and my dad was like, do, do you need money? <laughs> but no, it's like, um, it, they, I got an ad, a Facebook ad. Like, I'm only 28, well, I'll be 29 this year. And it said, um, you know, do you want to freeze your eggs? And I was like, oh my God, they're targeting me. They're targeting me. Like, <laughs> like, you have a podcast. Oh, which, yeah. Like, dating. And is this specifically it's sex and dating in ireland or in general well it's just been an irish perspective because mm-hmm. i've been here for the past four years so a lot of it would have been i talk about stuff that happened to me within the first few months of being here um but um yeah and he uh, well like so my co-host is des bishop and he lived in ireland from 14 onwards so but he's in his 40s now so he has that perspective of mm-hmm. kind of Irish from then and an American's perspective because he lives over here now and then I live over here but I have it from my generation which are a lot younger and we're becoming <coughs> more open about sex and talking about it and I guess the podcast is about that kind of like to trying to take away a bit of the shame towards it sure. um, and also not being too crazy like because I'm not I've, n- I've never been like hugely sexually active compared to the way New Yorkers go on but I have had my, <laughs> I have had my fair share of fun um, and it's talking a little bit about that and I think for me that was a huge like it was like a huge leap from Ireland to here and the way people are so open here and it's like it's like madness but good in one way because yes we should be open and these conversations should be happening because like there's things like I didn't even know you could get herpes from like skin on skin contact I just found that out like a few months ago wow. so you know so like if that's like I'm a 28 year old woman <laughs> this is nobody's talking about it mm-hmm. and I think if we yeah, if we are open about sex that's great yeah ideally go. without be feeling embarrassed and more like the regret I felt the first episode we did I thought oh my god my family will so me and but they were very supportive that's <laughs> awesome very supportive so they just said they won't listen <laughs> You know what? It's, a, it's a kind of support in its own way. I was super desperate for love, and it made me, like, quite... Um, now it's great because, like, I'm, I don't feel that desperation. I'm, pretty, I'm very happy in the place that I am now. But when I first came over, I've always wanted love. So I ended up dating, like, really people. Oh, I still have to keep going cursing. I'm so sorry. It's really okay. terrible yeah, people. Okay, Thanks. Um, but, yeah, so I guess I have one story that I always go back to... I had this date with a Jesus freak, and um, explain Jesus freak. And I know that's so offensive. Well, they're a freak for Jesus. Oh, okay. Yeah, and I know that's offensive because <laughs> I, you know, I said the freak part. I'm like, mm. yeah, yeah. Like, and I, I was like brought up Irish Catholic, and I'm mm. totally of the opinion that if you want to follow a religion, absolutely. If you don't, that's fine. I hate when people are like oh, you, religion's bad, or or people who don't have religion is bad. And it's like, no, it's just, it's, people are bad, and some people aren't. And it's like, mm. you know, we can use these things for good, or, you know, and they treat, they teach, you know, moral background, but it's, okay, so it's when it goes to the extent, like, with this guy on the date, and, of course, I wear a cross, so mm. I guess I didn't realise I was giving <laughs> off, and then the Irish accent, he was probably like, oh, yeah, I'll ask her out, and he was gorgeous as well, and younger, so I was kind of like, oh, this would be a bit of fun, this is exactly exactly what I need. And then he just kept up asking me if I have faith, and he was talking about Jesus and the Lord, and he talked about the planets, and I don't know why the planets have anything to do with Jesus. <laughs> it's just like, oh don't my god! Don't you remember in the fir- in the first? I know. Like, I was like, I must have slept Jesus through on the moon. that. <laughs> Jesus on the moon. <laughs> People think it was Neil Armstrong, but I'm gonna it cut was that. Jesus. I'm gonna cut that out, and I'm not gonna put it out there because we need to save that idea and make the movie. We need the rights. No one else can steal <laughs> right. the idea from us. That's ours. Good thing. Yeah. Good. Well, right. I already wrote this this date into my pilot um, <laughs> because it's just like I think it's just so bizarre but yeah. so he was getting the the signals from the cross and your accent and yeah then and, in, it and in fairness like I wear my cross because my father gave it to me and mm-hmm. I just don't think about religion that much but again if I went home and they asked me to go to mass I would yeah. so it's like but it's just I'm not it's a nice necklace yeah and like he, he kind of started asking me if I had faith and I was like oh, I don't really know what's going on up there and I kind of gave that opinion and then he was like trying to shove faith down my throat and then I and then he started to tell me oh yeah he told me he has OCD I, don't, I can't even remember how I got to this um and then he said he overthinks a lot and then um he said that uh 
he doesn't really like people and which is like a weird thing to say to a person on the first to day, a person the first day. <laughs> yeah you're right to any person yeah, I don't I, like people I was like I, I like them uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> I like them a lot um, and then um, it got to the point oh yeah well I said I kind of think maybe you should go to therapy for a lot of this stuff because sometimes I can be too empathetic and I was like oh I felt bad for him and mm-hmm. he was like oh I've tried therapy and um, <clears throat> is it like I guess because you're saying that is it bad that I'm like telling you all of this stuff I, I just thought it'd be good to let you know what you're getting involved in like you know I kind of and he said something like I see things people don't see and stuff like that and I said I was actually like thinking you're like you know Sherlock Holmes you know where he's like <laughs> yeah. anyway but then I was like um yeah no I don't think it's good to tell this stuff up front like I think most people kind of like hide it <laughs> for, a little, <laughs> for a little while and it's he didn't, gradual thing. He didn't yeah, find that funny at all and then I was like look I'm just saying like small talk kind of day is, is very important it's okay to be like how are you and because I don't know you yet and I don't need to kind of stay here and it's it's actually quite unfair for you to put your problems on me this is the first day and this is like the bitter New Yorker in me, I guess, coming out. And mm. then he was like, and I wanted to be like direct and honest. And he was like, oh, sorry, I just don't date a lot. Um, I haven't had a girlfriend before. Aww. And I was like, okay. And I was like, have you had sex before? Because I was like thinking Jesus freak, all of this. And he said no. And I was like, oh, no. this explains a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, you probably don't have OCD and you probably don't have all that stuff you probably just have to have sex um, <laughs> and like obviously I was gonna have sex with him um you're like an hour married yeah yeah well I you know oh. I was like I don't know I started thinking of those people who kind of go and kill people and I was like someone needs to have sex with this man because like oh you're like, 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 to let off it's such a healthy and his 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 so he had such an unhealthy view of sex and he was I was like why am I here why why did you ask on a date? And he goes, because that's the thing people do. Like, I want to get married and I want to have children. and But I don't want to have sex before marriage. And then he was like, sex is dirty and moral and it should only be done for reproduction. And I was like, well, my stance is that's the last reason it should be done. So <laughs> you need to kind of realize that this will never work out. Um, wow. And you guys had this whole conversation on the date. Yeah, and it was after a comedy show. So it was in the back room and there was nobody else there. And I was, on, I was ironically sitting on a pew <laughs> trapped by the table and the end of the pew because those things have like a, a corner oh. and he's sitting at the other side and the only way really if I wanted to run would have been to climb over the bloody table um, <laughs> but then I said it to him I said look I'm a, you know, a comedian at night and I do shows most night and I work at the time I was working six days a week and I said I don't have I just wanted to have fun I don't have the energy I'm sorry I'm out of here and he was, like, getting kind of upset. He was like, oh, and I was like, no, like, I'm just, oh, no. I told him sex was good uh, because I felt bad. Oh, yeah, 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 I forgot mm. this. I told him about how sex is how you find out you're in love with someone. And he mm. was like, it has nothing to do with love. And I was like, how would you know? And he goes, I love my family. And I was like, yeah, oh, God. I'm not telling you to go have sex with your family. <laughs> <laughs> like, so then I left. And he, he followed me to the bloody train. And he followed behind me a few steps, and he was, was like rambling on. So even after he knows that your views do not align at all, he's still chasing you. Yeah, well, and I'd say it's the first person that ever bloody listened to him. So I think that's kind of. Mm. And then I'm like walking to the train, and still trying to be polite so he doesn't murder me. And yeah, he, yeah, yeah. yeah it's that's so hard as well. Notable, reason. Oh my god! And then he says, "I just want to go to heaven one day, Katie. That's all I want. And why doesn't God? Why doesn't He show me a sign?" And I was like, "Look, maybe this is heaven." Because we're like, oh, "What do we know?" And he got really mad he at that. Maybe. Yeah, as we're walking into the subway. <laughs> oh, God. The MTA would love you right now. Uh, I mean, that's yeah, heaven. well, you know, and I love New York, so for me, it is like a sort of a heaven. <laughs> and my life is very good. I bear the disastrous story. But, like, for the past three and a half years, my life has been very good. But um, So you didn't take that well? No. I then we got the subway came, we got on the train, and... Yeah, like, ironically, I'm, like, praying he won't murder me, which is uh, maybe God did send him to send me back on the right path. But, <laughs> but um, yeah, I was, like, I started talking about masturbation then. I don't even know why. I was just, like, maybe, you know, uh, do, you, do you ever masturbate? And he was, like, 
mm, no, it's disgusting. And I was like, you, you sound like you have a lot of pent up. You need to go home, Seriously. masturbate. Um, yeah. And, you know, really open your... Se- you know, you you might not even be into women. You might be into something else. There's all these fun things you can explore. And I don't even know why, because if he's not having sex, he's not going to, like... Ex- but I was, like, yeah. just rambling. And, and he probably did not appreciate you saying that he could explore men. You know, I like, know. what? And it's not even... I don't. I just was, like, trying to be like, oh, look, like, these things, you need to really... You don't know what you're into mm-hmm. if you haven't even had sex. And you need to kind of... Oh, my God. And, and I was like... But it's true. That's how you find out what you're into, by being with different people. Yeah. And, like, masturbate. Masturbate. <laughs> um, but anyway, so he tried to get off the train. Oh, no, my friend texted me, and he looked at my phone, and it said Graham. And he was like, is that your boyfriend? And I was like, oh, my gosh. And I was Whoa. like, I'm actually going to meet him now as a friend. And he was like, but he's a guy. And I was like, oh, God, this is like, you're, like, from a different planet. Um, mm-hmm. So he tried to get off the train with me. And I was like, no, you don't. You don't live here. And he was like, yeah. And then, like, the doors are closing, and I pushed him back on the train. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, you stay on this train. <laughs> and then, yeah, I waited for the doors close. And everybody was just, like, <laughs> looking at me like, this crazy. Closing doors, please. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was crazy. But And then he texted me a bunch afterwards, and I was like, oh, he kept being like, you're in my prayers. And then he texted me, he was like, why haven't you texted me back? I'm worried about you. And then he texted again, he was like, I'm getting seriously worried. And I was like, oh, my God, this is, like, very upsetting i'm a woman i don't know you this yeah. is like you're, you're you need to and back he off saw your phone light up and asked if that was a guy yeah. or a guy friend like there's so many red flags oh yeah yeah i'm lucky now he didn't kill me it was a long time ago so i'm fine yeah but yeah yeah um we've been asking all of our guests this question and basically it's when you are having a rough time uh, maybe in those first couple months, maybe even more recently, anytime that the anxiety kind of gets to you or you're not feeling super hot, what uh, is something you can go back to consistently to kind of make you feel better? It's like your little joy, your little place. It can be anything. It can be an album. It can be a movie. It can be a food. It can be an activity. It can be a person. Anything like that. I have two things. Hit me. T. Yay! Tea is the best. You're a good tea company. cures all problems. I drink a lot of tea. I drink like thirteen cups a day. Nice. Um, but yeah, I know. I feel like tea is very relaxing and just like the best. And what uh, brands of tea? Um, Lions and berries. Now Ireland's quite divided between some people are Lions people and some people are berries people. That's our okay. that's our brands of tea. There, it's mm. the only two. And uh, and most people are either berries or lions, but I like both. Sometimes I'll mix it up. <laughs> Your expression there made me very happy. Uh, is there like a certain kind of like flavor or like a certain? It's kind just of... very strong tea. Your tea okay. here is a bit. You're right. Um, You're right. <laughs> but it's yeah, it's really nice, and it's something me and my girlfriends would have always done. We'd meet up for tea, or you know, if someone's upset, you're always like, "Oh, let's get a cup of tea. We we'll put a kettle on." And it's a very Irish cultural thing that tea cures everything. Like you're hungover, have a cup of tea, or sure. you know, I need yeah. Um, so definitely, tea is you know, my favorite, and it's Beautiful. yeah. And then the other thing is my two best friends. So one of them lives in Australia. And the other lives in Ireland, and we have a WhatsApp group, but we like voicemail each other and tell each other about our days. But it's like, I was thinking about it the other day, and I was like, there's a lot of things I probably wouldn't have gotten through if I hadn't been able just to. Because when you have problems, like, I think it's so good just to say it out loud. Mm -hmm. So even just voicemailing that to them and getting their advice, but it just, it's very important to have like friends that you can kind of confide in. You're not just bottling up inside. I mean, it's okay, I'm fine, I'm fine. And then they understand as well, because one of them's still in Ireland and one of them's in Australia. So for the Australian, she really gets the whole being away from your family. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the one in Ireland is actually, she's my cousin. So we grew up together. We basically slept in the same bed for a long time. So it's really nice, yeah. So it's nice that we have that WhatsApp group. And if you can get those three people together and have tea... But we used to do it every week when we lived in Ireland, but sure, we just can't say, obviously. <laughs> All right, everybody, follow Katie on Twitter and Instagram at Katie Boyle Comic and learn more at katieboylecomic.com. And if you enjoyed the show, please leave us a review on iTunes. It helps word about the show spread like a STI. Oh. That was the choice. It was on. It was on theme. You're right. I mean, not that any of us have it. I, you know, be safe, everyone. You are digging a grave. Be safe. And of course, make sure you're subscribed to easily download new episodes. 
I'm Trying is hosted, edited, produced, and scored by Janelle Dennis and me, Jacob Derwin. Our cover art was created by the fabulous Sammy Kappa. See more of her work at SammyKappa.com. That's S-A-M-I-C-A-P-P-A.com. You can follow the show on Twitter and Instagram at I'm Trying Show. And if you want... You can follow us individually at Janelle Dennis and at Jacob Derwin. If you've screwed up and or embarrassed yourself and you're looking for help. Or pity. Reach out to us on Twitter or email at I'm trying show at gmail.com and our team of crisis experts. It's just us. We'll be more than happy to assist you. Reasonably happy, okay? Thank you so much for listening and the words of Queen. Can, can anybody, anybody find me somebody, somebody to love? love.